evening. All you gotta do is tell the truth. You'll do that, won't you? Of course he will. Won't you, love? Well, it's our turn today, and I'm sure Anthony will be very brave. Good luck, Ant. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask all of you to leave now, except those who aren't giving evidence. Just do your best, son. Is Tim coming in today? No, he's busy. Probably letting that Kerry get her claws into him. Well, just go, will you? Make the most of it. That maid and a little get goes down any day, you know. We'll see. Get out of my way, scum. No further questions, Your Honor. Detective Sergeant Casey, you have told us how you investigated the case. You looked at all the details very carefully. Yes. Now, for months, Martin Murray was the chief, in fact, the only suspect. Yes. Now, there was no evidence to suggest at any stage, uh, until his confession, that Anthony was in any way involved. No. Now, the jury has already heard from the man walking his dog about how he alerted the police, who then found the body lying in a culvert pipe into which this pond drains. Now, if Anthony had wanted to hide this body in the culvert pipe, he would have had to wade into the pond, wouldn't he? Yes. Did any of the forensic tests match any substances from the culvert pipe with anything found on Anthony's clothing? No. And later on, when the school bag was analysed, did any of the mud and lichen match any substances from the culvert pipe? No. I'd like to turn now to what you earlier described as Anthony's confession. Your Honour, if I may play a section from that taped interview. So you're at the edge of the pond. What happened then? She starts battering me. She hit me loads and loads. And then she tried to strangle me. What did you do? I tried to fight back. Just to stop her. I thought she was going to kill me then. Then we both fell in the water. Then what happened? She stopped it me. What made her stop? She just stopped. She was just lying in the water. Not moving. What did you do then? I ran away. Why did you run away? You could have tried to help her. I thought she might start hitting me again. I thought she was going to kill me. You have just heard that section from the taped interview with Anthony, Sergeant. It is a full and detailed account, is it not? Yes. Is there one single detail in that which you can prove to be untrue? What? Well, no. No further questions, Your Honor. Kilda! Please constrain yourself, Mrs. Clough. We understand how distressing this must be, but we have to get to the truth. Now, there's one other matter I have to ask you about. There was a previous occasion when your daughter was attacked. Is that right? Yes, sir. I understand you weren't present, but you saw the bruising afterwards. Yeah. Where were these bruises? On her arms, her back. Big black bruises. He hit her with a bar, jumped out on her and a mate page with an iron bar. An iron bar? Can you explain what sort of iron bar? From one of them keep fit things. Page told the court that she wasn't attacked by Anthony. Is that what Imelda told you? Well, he wouldn't attack Page, would he? He only had it in for our Imelda. What state was Imelda in after this attack? How do you think she was? In agony. Scared stiff she wouldn't go out for days. Please stay there, Mrs. Clough. I have no further questions. Thank you. How's it going? You heard that. How do you Before think Before I ask going? any more questions, Mrs. Clough, may I first of all say how much everyone here in court sympathises with you over the loss of your daughter? I don't want your sympathies. I want him put away. I want him put away for life for what he's done to us. Mrs. Clough, we understand how difficult this is for you. But please confine yourself to answering Mr. Billington's questions. I'm obliged, Your Honour. Mrs. Clough, let me take you back to early last year. Did you know that Imelda was bullying Anthony? She wasn't bullying him. But the jury has just heard from the head teacher about how you were told that this was the case. She was terrified of him, that's all I was interested in. But I'm talking about before the attack with the iron bar, you were officially told that Imelda was involved in bullying, weren't you? Yeah. 
And this wasn't the first time either, was it? At the age of eight, as a pupil at St Agnes's Roman Catholic Primary School, she was temporarily excluded for bullying, wasn't she? She was little. Kids have always picked on her. Then she was temporarily excluded at Brookside Comprehensive early last year. Uh, it was a few days before she died, wasn't Doesn't it? need to say he had the right to murder her. Miss Clough, please. Did you chastise her? Did you punish her? Give her a good talking to as to what was happening at school? You didn't? It's kids stuff. The fallout and everyone starts on about bullying. But she was about to be permanently excluded. How did she feel about this? She'd been hit with an iron bar. How do you think she felt? And how did you feel? Bloody angry we both were. Angry enough to try and kill our aunt. Kids caused us nothing but trouble. Why should our Imelda be kicked out of school? No further questions, Your Honour? You may stand down, Mrs Clough. Stop looking at me! Silence! I will not have interruptions in my court. I could have been beaten to death because of you. And I'm no Mark Cloughs. You came that close to being blinded for life. You shouldn't have dropped the charges. Don't you think I've got enough going wrong in my life? Not the hassle of that. I was just glad he didn't kill me. It was a mistake. We could have put them away. Look. We held you for a reason. And what happened, happened. I am sorry about the consequences, though. I think you should know that. Don't come looking to me to salve your conscience. I'm not. But a child was missing, probably dead. All I was doing was my job, and you were the main suspect. Maybe now's not the time, eh? Well, now you know how I felt. I'm not bothered about how you felt. All I care about is what's happening to my boy in there. Members of the jury, before I call Anthony to give his version of events, there are three crucial things that I must point out. Now, Anthony's evidence will show that he was chased to the pond and was attacked by Imelda. During the course of the struggle, when trying to protect himself, they both fell into the water. Anthony maintains that his retaliation was no more than a push or two, and yet Imelda died. But how did she die? What was the cause of her death? There was some evidence of damage to the back of her skull, but the experts couldn't say how this was caused. Now, none of the forensic tests have been able to provide any evidence of murder. Could Imelda's death, then, have been an accident? We've heard evidence that Imelda was systematically bullying Anthony. Indeed, she just finished a three-day suspension because of that. Anthony's evidence will show you that Imelda was out for revenge. She chased him to that lonely pond and she attacked him. Yes, Anthony fought back. Yes, he struggled and pushed. But was that murder? Or was it an accident? Imelda had beaten and humiliated him. She'd forced him to hand over sweets and money she'd promised to make his life a misery forevermore. At the time of Imelda's death, Anthony's life was a living nightmare. I'd like to call Anthony to give his evidence. Take the book in your right hand. What are they going to call me? I don't know, love. Be patient, love. We've all got to wait. You shouldn't be in here. You shouldn't be in this place at all. You had no money, so you stole sweets to pay off Imelda Clough to stop her from hitting you. Yeah. And what if she asked you for money instead of chocolates and sweets and soft drinks? I used my pocket money. Or me dinner money. Did you use any other money? I used my birthday money once. And what did you do if you didn't have any money? I... I stole it. From my mum's... One million's purse. And how did that make you feel? Shamed. And what about the days when you had to go into school? How did you feel then? I was frightened. I didn't know when she was going to come for me. 
Imelda and her friend, they were on your mind all the time. Yeah. 24 hours a day. Yeah. You lived in fear. Yeah. Look, and that lot's still bullying them now. Look at them trying to rattle me, brother. Quiet. I will not have interruptions. Any more and you'll be removed from the court. You understand? Mr. Billington. But, Anthony, you could have gone to your head teacher, you could have gone to your parents and told them what was going on. Why didn't you? Because I thought that I'd make it worse. I thought she'd really get me. And she'd really hurt you? Yeah. Was there any other reason that you never reported this bullying? Because it was girls bullying me. Did Imelda begin bullying you at primary school? Yeah. So when you found out you were leaving there to attend Brookside Comprehensive, how did you feel? I thought that I'd get away from it. I thought she was going to go to the all-girl Catholic school. She didn't, did she? She arrived at Brookside Comprehensive with her friend. Yeah. And how did you feel? Well, I didn't want to go into school. And how did you manage not to go to school? Your mum and dad wanted you to go to school, didn't they? Yeah. So how did you manage to stay away from school? I said I was sick. You felt ashamed of what you were doing? Yeah. So why did you continue to lie to your mum and dad? Continue to steal money if you felt so ashamed? Because I was scared. I didn't know when she was going to come for me. She hated me. What's happening? Yeah, I'm going to give him evidence. So what are you doing out here? Oh, yeah. I've just got to make a phone call. What phone call? I'm trying to run a business, you know. We're stuck out here. We need to know what's going on. Yeah, I'll only be a minute. That's his own brother in there. Here he is. Better keep your job shut in the future, haven't you, right, pal? You even look at our aunt again, you'll get worse. Got it? During the